Get so mad, there's no control in me. My thoughts get so bad, I'm like, I might grab a bat. I don't know my wrath, my blood boils over like. Oh God, here goes. I lost all feeling from my head to my toes. You said some shit that I can't let go, so just stay tuned for the rest of the show. So have you ever felt betrayed? Which is how you see things. Realize something needs change. 'Cause I know you got me loved. Let me show you what's. Enough is enough. I'll take a face full of payment just to make a statement. I know there's no turning back. Oh God, adrenaline and wasted. So mad I can taste it. I know there's no turning back. I'll do what it takes. I ain't making mistakes like that. I'll bleed on your face to make you go take it back. I'll lose my shit and I go crazy when.
What is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is CJ alongside Jonathan and Kyle. And welcome to Hate to Pile On presents GM Mode. And we're back. I, You know, I'm almost nervous because I feel like I don't know how to do this anymore. But hopefully my guys can help me uh, get back in track. And hopefully we get you guys in, on track for the NFL Draft, which is about a week or two weeks away now. Uh, so a little under two weeks. But, uh, fellas, before we get too far, how are you guys doing today? Exceptionally well, CJ. Kyle, how are you feeling? Better than I deserve. And I'm glad you guys are doing well because, I mean, we got some draft talk today. We got some NFL news. We got a lot on the docket. So I guess we should just get going. I guess it has been a while. So I guess we should start with, obviously, this is older news, but as a Carolina Panthers fan, so with the Panthers having the first pick, trading up all the way to number one, and the drama (laughs) – that's been going back and forth a lot. Who should the pick be? It seems to be the dust is starting to settle. But, Jonathan, how do you feel about the selection at number one, and who do you think uh, the Panthers are going to select here? Well, up until this week, I thought it was going to be C.J. Stroud. No, he's – I thought it was going to be. But then this week we found out. C.J. Stroud is a dumb dumb. He can't oh, pass the S two test. They said he's too stupid to read a defense. That's that's not what that test does. It sounds like a smear campaign to me. It does sound like a smear campaign. Sounds like a, a Will Levis agent out here uh, leaking <laughs> some stuff, trying to get him, trying to get his boy back in the spotlight. But no, what did the Baku say? I will not have it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I still hope it's Stroud. I still really like Stroud. But all along, I was saying I think it's going to be C.J. Stroud or another quarterback. And that quarterback is not Bryce Young. It is Anthony Richardson. You don't compile a coaching staff like the Panthers have, have built with developers, head coach type caliber talent, offensive developers to then go and take Bryce Young, who we, who is the most pro-ready quarterback in the draft. You don't do that. You do that to find somebody who has some deficiencies, not physical ones like Bryce Young and his stature and weight, but technique, footwork. Arm angles. Do you feel Somebody like this like, staff is has deficiency? It's not the staff was put together because of Tepper's deficiencies of hiring a good coach staff previously. So he's trying to overcompensate by trying to give everything possible I, to this staff. Maybe it's it's highly like uh, highly possible. Um, I don't think Dave Tepper is a dummy, but. What he did with Matt Rule was dumb, and I think he's learned from it. Right. So I can see him definitely overcorrecting and wanting a staff of nothing but head coaches and head coaching caliber coaches. Right. Which, I mean, they have none. They do. I mean, it's an electric staff. It's an all-star cast. I mean, if this if things do go right, you should be picking more staff within the next couple of years or so. Uh, that's, you know, best-case scenario, obviously, but – uh, Kyle, what do you think about uh, what Jonathan just said about the staff and then based off of the staff choices and uh, the pick uh, should be more of a, I guess, uh, developmental guy, something you can mold better with the staff that he has? Um, I think that's uh, a terrible take because you don't trade to one if you want to take the developmental guy, right? You trade to three. You don't give up DJ Moore, and you still get the developmental guy. I think this is all smoke screen uh, to make the Texans trade two one. I mean, that's a good point, but <laughs> will will the Texans fall for the smoke screen? Because I mean, they put out another sm- quote unquote smoke screen of just oh no, we're good. We'll just get Will Anderson. 
Like, if you take Bryce, our guy, no problem. Yeah, we don't like these quarterbacks anyway. That's fake, hundred percent. I mean, who knows? No, you, no, no, you know that's fake, hundred uh, percent. They are. I panic. Uh, Will Anderson. Uh, I so I think Zerline. Um, I forget who. Uh, is really connected in the Texans. They don't have Will Anderson as their number one edge rusher on the board. So that's all fake. So do you think they stay at two if Bryce Young is the pick at one? No. They won't pick CJ. It's not happening. Okay. So who do you think? So what do you think? What do you think is the most likely situation that happens here uh, at two if Bryce is no longer on the board? I think uh, I think all hell <laughs> breaks loose. All hell breaks loose for the three and two spot. It's going to be the craziest moment in draft history when every other team that doesn't have. Now, the AFC is kind of packed with quarterbacks, but when every team that needs a quarterback going forward sees the three and the two spot wide open with quarterbacks on the board that people want, those people are going to get the hole because the whole NFL is going to be calling them. Yeah. I did see a report today that C.J. Stroud wants to be a Raider, right? Obviously – the Raiders were in Oakland for a long time as of growing up. Maybe he was a fan. Uh, could you see the Raiders moving up to two or three to go get CJ Stroud if he's there? Uh, yeah, they have. I think they have to go to two, right? So they can't go three. Right. So I, I can see that for the Texans. They go back to um, what seven? Yeah. Right. And then they go back up to three and pick Will Anderson. Or will uh what Bill leaves at three? Oof. Yeah. I think for Will Levis, I think you could. I don't think Will Levis is going over uh, Anthony Richardson, and I if Anthony Richardson is still there at three or four, I think there's two teams that are coming. That is the Tennessee Titans and. As is the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons are not going to trade for a quarterback. I, I mean, they're, well, that's what – actually, I messed that sentence up. They are going to trade for a quarterback. They're not going to trade up for a rookie quarterback. They're building a defense of 90-year-old men who can play football now. Right. I mean, this is – let's – yeah, we could keep it a buck about the NFC South. It's like the NFC South is so wide open. So obviously the Atlanta Falcons see that there's an opportunity, but we I don't believe for one second they're like, oh yeah, like Riddler is our guy. Like, it's no way in hell. But again, yeah, they what they got him in the second round last year. So like, you know, he was like the first quarterback taken really early, or you know, somewhat early. Uh and so Maybe, but he wasn't, you know, he didn't show anything at all, really, when he had the opportunity to start after uh, they let go. Uh, His last game wasn't terrible. His last, like, it wasn't good, but it wasn't terrible. But still, you want to see some kind of flashes, and he really didn't do much at all. So, like, I don't know if it's like they like what they saw in practice, and maybe just those rookie jitters. But I think that this team is, is decent, and, like, if... Like they make, it makes too much sense for the for them. They they should have been all over Lamar Jackson. Or y'all didn't y'all didn't hear the rumor that they're in love with uh, B. John Robinson. Who? Uh, the Falcons Ooh. are in love with B. John. Bro, if the Falcons drafted B. John at seven or no eight, they have. They, I that's they what I'm eight. hearing, bro. I, Falcons I read eight. it. Yeah, eight. I read that a bunch of spots that they're in love with him. Yeah, I mean, they like, obviously Arthur Smith loves running backs, yeah. but like, you get your new Derrick Henry. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know. I just don't know. I mean, they got their other quarter right, so like, like they could pass. In theory, they could That's pass the quarter That's at a backup. Board. That's a backup. That's a backup. Nah, he's a he's a slot. I mean, no, he, got... he's definitely not a slot, bro. He's huge, bro. No, he cannot play inside. Okuda's not huge. Okay. All right. You're forgetting his measurements, then. He is a okay. 
take this completely off track, but name a time a first rounder went for a day three pick and it turned out good. Name one other time it happened. This is a talking point from some uh, TikTok uh, couch guy. I forgot his name. He's like uh, he's like the off man uh, Bingle, but it's never it's never worked out. This is a backup. This is a nice um, like cornerback three on our roster. Not an <laughs> interior. Right, I mean, which he is. I mean, they got Casey Hayward, they got AJ Terrell, and then Akuda exactly. with Jesse exactly. Bates. So, like, it, like they are pretty solid to back it. Yeah, you could get yeah. through another guy because obviously, like, uh, you know, Casey Hayward is not young. But, you know, I mean, but if they feel like if that's what they're capable, like they're good, they may address that need, then it's like, okay, what other needs can we address early? Yeah. Obviously, I think pass rushers should be a top, like, a top thing for them because they just need to be able to generate pass rush. But then, like, you got to think they need weapons on that offensive side of the ball, and they need a damn quarterback. Like, I'm just not sold they on got weapons. They got, they got weapons. They don't have a uh, – you can not be sold on Ritter. I'm not either, but um, they have I mean, weapons. Uh, so, I mean, we got Drake London. Ritter. We got Drake yeah. London and Cordero Patterson, it's and then so a Kyle Pitts is coming back off of ACL. So – um, they traded for Janano. Oh, I can't say his name. So oh, Jono Smith. Yeah. I mean, yes. But is Jono Smith really set the world on fire? I mean, he does fit that offense, right? The, another Arthur Smith like connection yeah. from the past. Yeah. So, like, yeah, like, I mean, this uh, Arthur Smith does do well with lack of that he has. But like, you want you don't want to make him have to keep making do of lack of. You want to really like. Go boom, like oh yeah, this is the guy. Okay, Unless they have a plan to he's get running. Okay, name the the amazing sick ass wide receivers that the Titans ran. Uh, um, uh, name the two guys that they had. Well, they had Corey Davis and AJ Brown. Oh, okay, and then they also had uh, that Walker. slot. Yeah, the Lady Walker. They also had Adam the uh, uh, Adam Humphreys. So they had is that they had you're way better wide receiver talent. That's not true. That's not true. Adam Humphreys is better than who? Name any other wide receiver of the Falcons besides Drake London. You you literally just said two tight ends, and then you said fucking Corey Davis. I said A.J. Brown and Corey Davis, two wide yes. receivers. Yes. So, okay, so A.J. Brown, and I'm going to assume, I'm not, I don't believe this, but I'm going to assume that they think that A.J. Brown <laughs> and uh, Drake London are similar tiers. They're their number ones. The rest of them suck. They kept trying to make trade uh, trades. I mean, um, like a guy. They all stunk. Like they only had one wide receiver ever. But Corey Davis played well enough to where he got a big contract. Yeah, so, they have, yeah, because they had Derrick Henry jamming it down people's fucking throats, and then AJ Brown. Like what? And he still produced for them. Okay, no okay. Gonna sign him if he didn't produce. Okay, go look, go, look the go look at the Vikings. Go look at the Vikings. Go look at the Vikings right now. We just got Adam Thielen a contract. This motherfucker hasn't been played a full season in three years, and he sucks. But I don't. I mean, listen. I'm not a GM for the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers were thirsty for receivers. Let's let's call a spade a spade. Yeah, but y'all got the better one for cheaper. Well, that's because the better one had a, a messed up ankle. But but like he just had surgery on it and got JJ, a guaranteed contract. JJ is better than um JJ is better. Than uh, AJ Brown, like obviously that's easy to say, right? We had uh, TJ Hawkinson. Ah! Um, he for uh, half a season, right? Yeah, they trained him in season. He, yeah, and he had like a hundred yards game one, bro. He came in on third day and just put a hundred up. Then what did he do game two? I actually don't remember, but yeah, yeah, yeah. not good. Yeah. No, it, no, it, no. He, he, was he was solid. He was solid. He was very yeah. good. He was like a top three, like. Oh yeah, I love T.J. Hawkinson. He's no, one of my favorite tight ends. We had him for at trade deadline, so eight games. We had him for eight games. He had seven hundred yards. That's yeah, pretty but... good. That's pretty good. Um, and then uh, uh, we had probably one of Dalvin Cook's better years. He had a couple game winning breaks that really. His better back. years that you guys are gonna cut him. You want to yeah, talk that about that stuff? Right. So think about this. Okay, okay. In what world? He this had is, 519 yards in 10 games for you. Okay, yeah. 10 games and less yards. Someone's cooking the numbers, Kyle. I'm, I have Pushing a lot of numbers your in my head. 
Listen, listen. I got a lot of numbers going on. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm watching. Uh, if you're not tuned into, none of y'all are Vikings Twitter. I've been watching uh, this absolute villain on Vikings Twitter get actually dumped on, dunked on. I, I wanted to say dumb on Boy, on Sosa? the seat. Oh, Sosa? yeah. On um, by I don't want to say his name. Don't don't. Uh, uh, I didn't say but, her first name. Yeah, but uh, he got dunked on by the Vikings. He got he got dunked on by the KJ Osborne himself. And I've been and about everyone on defense and and Adam Thielen tuned in and said some shit about him too. So you know, uh, I got a lot of numbers in my head. You know, they the most toxic in. fan base in the NFL. No, we're I think we we're the most. I think we got voted like the most negative um, fan base in the NFL. Actually, like from yeah. Facebook and everything. Yeah. Um, we are pretty negative, um, but uh, toxic. But, but like, fucking draft stuff, right? So let's 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 talk about this. We have cap room, right? We don't have to get rid of anyone, right? <coughs> if we weren't making a big move, why would we have to cut him? Well, I think what they're thinking about it's kind of like that move of like, okay, yeah, we're good now, but then it's like, why keep pushing the you know, the inevitable to, down the road. You don't. Okay, why wouldn't you play him? I mean, you, you could probably. Be... somebody better on the roster. There isn't. Jalen Rager. Come on. Okay. What's first round pick versus the undrafted? undrafted? Remember that, that, that third day three trade for a first round pick? And Dalvin Cook was drafted in the second round. We, we already established that running backs don't matter. So you can draft do. a few running backs. But. But okay, okay. Name uh, Dalvin Cook's easily a top five running back, right? In the league, right? He's what? Right now, he's like we haven't had a full second season of some of these younger guys. But Dalvin Cook's easily a top five running back in the league, right? Easily, easily. I think like, he's debatably. Right? I mean, you got McCaffrey, you got yep. Derrick Henry, yep. You got Austin Eckler. No. Yeah. They they score more points. That doesn't mean he's better. They're they're. Like that's a different kind of offense. You're you're getting you're looking at numbers too much. Motherfuckers, they don't want to pay him. <laughs> yeah, because he's an undrafted running back. Yeah, remember you when know? they had Melvin? Remember when they had Melvin Gordon, and then he went nuts, and then they had another guy also going nuts. Well, Melvin yeah. Gordon went nuts rushing the ball. Austin Eckler goes nuts rushing and receiving. Yeah, where's Melvin Gordon? I mean, this, let's talk. Let's just keep it a buck. The Vikings are not going. You're not going to recognize this Vikings team in the in the year, right? Like Kirk is not going to be there much longer. Dalvin Cook's probably not going to be there much longer. No, no. But what I'm saying, is, JJ, but what I'm saying is, you can play him now, right? The cap doesn't move, right? Right? We cut him next year. Who cares, right? I think I might be a little bit wrong there. With like, I I have to look. We might. It might be a bigger cut next year. But Kirk's gone. We have room to spend money. So cutting him doesn't make sense to me because why wouldn't you play him and then cut him next year when you're trying to when you don't have to pay Kirk anymore when you don't have to pay uh, Harrison Smith or whoever's there? It doesn't make sense to cut him if we're not trading him. That doesn't make any sense. If we don't trade him, you don't cut him. But anyway, let's get back to this. I think that he's a trade piece. I think that we're going to go get who, the quarterback who slipped. That's my little secret of the show. We're going to use these, uh, the Darius Smith, who doesn't want to be here, um, and, or and Dalvin Cook, who wants a bigger role or whatever. We're going to use those in pieces to go <coughs> up and get the guy that's falling. Or the reason you didn't cut Kirk is because he has uh, $49 million in dead cap. That's actually not really true because we moved his uh, – we wouldn't cut Kirk. That would be dumb. We would trade Kirk, which All right, you would have. trade Kirk. You save twenty point two five million. Dead cap is forty eight point seven five million. So you still incur a that's dead cap true. of twenty eight and a half million. Yeah, uh, that's actually uh, probably not true because the void years changes things. The void years, three. the void years only count if he's on your roster. If you trade him, the void years accelerate onto that year's cap. Are you That's sure about that? Because I, I was just looking 100%. at today. I was looking at it today. Some people that know Cap. The people would just get his contract with the void years. No. 
the void years hit your cap the year you trade him or cut him. Because it trade it well, yeah, something like that. I, I read I, there's a way that you could trade him anyway, but you, I didn't say trading Kirk anyways until next year. He he could agree to a reworked deal and then be traded, and that could save you some money. But as his contract is now, but I wasn't talking about trading Kirk, right? You're talking about trading Dalvin. Oh, Dalvin. my bad, my bad. Yeah, my yeah, bad. yeah. That's, you threw me off a little bit. Um, that's how they what? I but I no, misunderstood. I, I think that we go, we we save Zadarius, we save uh, Dalvin. This is a biking podcast for a minute, just uh, and uh, we go and get the quarterback falling. We just had our, I, I know y'all probably didn't tune in, but we just had our um our GM presser where they pretty much said they want a quarterback to sit behind Kurt. <coughs> they have had one, uh, the Monpon. Yeah, where is he at? Uh, I don't know. The Mon Pond dried up. I don't know where it's at now. Yeah. It's a Mon Desert. Get ready to be the USFL, to be honest. I doubt it. Um, but um, I think, like, doubt it as in he, he makes the team. Um, but continue. So, okay, so in theory, like, let's just give me a yes or no. Dalvin Cook is on the roster for the Vikings this season. Uh, I already know that it's no. Okay. I know. I know. I know. I'm not gonna tell you why. I know. I know that he's not on the roster. He right. might be traded. He might be already traded. That's a, that's a good chance. Well, okay. Let's let's do this. We'll give deadlines. Dalvin that's Cook fine. is on the roster after the trade deadline for the Vikings. You're gonna say no, right? Won't be on the raw. Ro- I don't think he he's going to be on the roster a week after the draft. Okay. Okay, that was going to be my third time. I was going to do trade deadline, start of season, and draft night. We're going to be my three. So, so draft night. I want to say draft night, but I don't like know his physical stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, passing a physical. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think that by the in when the draft is cleared up, he won't be on the like when you're no longer worried about signing people anymore. He's not going to be on the roster. All right, let me ask you this question, Kyle. Who, what is the biggest need for the Minnesota Vikings right now as we speak? Just one need, the biggest the big, one. The biggest or the most, the most important need? Uh, what is the difference? Different. Yeah, what is the your difference? Is, okay, so we have the worst linebacker room in the NFL. I do not want to take an inside linebacker round one. I would. I would. I don't want to. The need of we have a player at linebacker is bad. Deep interior defense alignment, we have one. Uh, We do not have a wide receiver two on the roster. Right? So, but. Sound like your boy now. I didn't say. uh, uh, I don't know. (laughs) Did you see the, did you see the video that we posted uh, to him? Uh, What, 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 uh. What what stadium we were in when that happened? But anyways, uh, it was in, it was in it was in Charlotte, by the way. Um, uh, no, the over- Charlotte game. or Charlottesville? Charlotte. <laughs> I don't know no Charlottesville that I'm trying to play football in. Your quarterback does. Well, hey, his dad does. Anyways, continue. Um, but uh, so like, like I would take. Ah, so weird because I'm not. I said something in a chat with uh, Jonathan. I don't agree with anymore. I forgot. I didn't know uh, uh, White was twenty five years old. I would uh, like if he was twenty three. I would take him at twenty three. Um, he's too old to take at twenty three right now. But Keon White? Um, yeah, Keon White. He's twenty five years old. I'm not taking him at twenty three. I didn't know he was that old either. Yeah, yeah, that changes a lot of my opinion. Especially um, when he's still a raw, like trying to yeah, develop a guy. Yeah. So that's just not ideal. I would take- yeah, yeah, I would take a defensive. I right, would he's, take. He's twenty four. Put some respect on his name. He'll be t- he'll be twenty five when the season starts. No, he just turned twenty four in January. Damn, I was lied to. That makes sense. Uh, Jan- January twentieth. I mean, that helps a yeah. little. Two weeks yeah, after your major date. <laughs> but no, I still don't take him. Twenty four. That's Hendon Hooker. Okay. But at a non Hendon Hooker. But it's but see here's the thing if if say we're picking thirty right, which is possible you know because you can trade picks, um he can play interior, 
he can play the four eye, he can play five, he can play a seven, which is exactly what you need in a four edge defense, right? But I would take Brian Breezy, bro, whatever, Breezy, whatever. I want to say Breezy or every time I say it. Say. I know. Um, we could take him. I think an edge is always important, de- important definitely if you're trading the Darius, right? So Nolan Smith, uh, um, that's really all I want there. He'll be gone. Know. Yeah, uh, yeah, I also I know, don't know but, if he's a full time edge. He might be more of like a situational pass. What about what about an outside linebacker in a in a three four? He could be like that. Um, yeah, I think yeah. I I called him. Uh, Who's the? I, he reminds me of a lot of the good the 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 situational edge rusher from the Bucks. JPP. No thinner linebacker. Uh, dude, they drafted like two years ago in the top. Devin of White, Devin, Devin. Well, no, he might De- be in the market pretty soon. Not Devin White. Yeah, uh, they uh, interior. Uh, I'm looking up for you. I know who you're talking about. But yeah, um, but uh, but I would take corner. See, I I don't. We need a cornerback, right? I feel like our starters are there, but we need that. But I think Jordan Addison, and I'm coming around. I don't actually like Jay Flowers. I like, but I feel like. Um, there's a guy on my roster that fits that. Joe player. Tryon Shoyenka. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. But you talking, the dude from Washington, right? Like the, I wasn't the talking about him. I was actually talking about um, uh, uh, maybe a guy who rides horses that rushes Zed. That would be Devin White. Devin White's the horse rider. Yeah, I know. Um, let's move on from this. Uh, I'm wrong. Okay. Um, continue. Uh, um, but uh, – I don't know, like if one of the three corners fall, which I don't think they will, I would take oh, them. Those corners, corners would get snatched up like a little kid. Who, who yeah, are like, the top three corners though? Let, let's discuss because CJ has a bit of a hot take. Uh, I want the hot take now. I lead up with that so I can be well, disappointed. Me personally, I I think I've fallen in love with Deontay Banks, and I think at sixteen I would snatch him up or even tr- low key. It depends on how the quarters are falling, but like, if they're going fast, I would go. Yeah, I, I, would I, go I, don't think, I don't think I don't think that's a hot take. I think if you were in the Vikings chat, uh, you would just be a Vikings fan. Yuck! That wouldn't be that. I don't know. Like, fan. If, like if you're in if you're in the analytics crowd, like if I needed like so, do you think that he comes in and he's better than Brian Murphy? Byron M- Murphy? Do you think that he? Do you think that he starts or get like like if you had Murphy on your roster right now, and and you spent a second on this is where I'm coming from, and you think you sent, uh, spent a second on Booth, right? Do you think that Banks comes in and he's like a contributor that matters at 23 or where you are picking, which I forget because I did did Booth did Booth was injured. uh injured was but was he a pick of your new GM? Yes. See that and, and, you go? And, and his favorite and 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 your and our GM's favorite draft pick was a third round linebacker uh, cornerback that I love who earned a start over people. So I think we have three people on our roster that are at the top of the cornerback room. And yes, we need death, but I do not think that a top twenty five pick is worth like I don't think they come in and they get major snaps at cornerback. Yeah, I mean, the only reason why you would make that pick is knowing for sure that he is going to come in and contribute. That's the yeah, only like, way yeah. you do that. And you obviously don't believe in what's in the room right now. 100%, right? right? Yeah, so. yeah, I agree. So, like, <laughs> to me, if I was a cornerback-hungry team, right, which I would say y'all are, right? Yeah, for sure. thousand percent. Who's your, who's your one and two? Quarterback one currently, or like, or, or the draft. No, you, uh, your team. So who's your quarterback one and two? Current roster. Current roster. Kendall Fuller is is quarter one. Uh, wow. Quarter two is Saint Ju- Saint Juice, right? And he's so he think- battles injuries, right? And then you got Christian Holmes. Uh, then we got uh, Danny Johnson, who's just resigned for two years, but a so super think- low deal. So so, so he quarters. A- so so. So you think that 
say whoever you get is going to come, like the top three guys, four guys, they're going to come in and they're going to play and they're going to play and be impactful for your team. That's going to make a difference. They're going to be thrown in regardless of their impact for or not. They're going to play day one, right? So you think I, I don't think so? I don't think so. Like I, that's my thing. Like I don't think that a Saint Saint Jude who was kind of a stud, he, he had his coming out last year. See, he see he is a stud, but again, availability is key, right? But, and so he okay, has so, had two concussions. All like last season, so like that issue alone. If he can get away from that bug, he is great. The concussions love last it. year, I think concussions last year were so overblown. Now, now not in state player safety. I'm gonna oh, take brother. that back. Like now, that's not what I'm saying. Player <laughs> safety, you gotta time out, time out. If you if player safety, player safety. But I think that. Bell is going to pull back on concussions. I personally don't think it's a good idea because we had the highest number of concussions ever was last year when it's supposed to be like the most safe. They just came out with a brand new fucking helmet, right? Well, so obviously, like, that's the thing, right? Like it's supposed to be, right? In theory, in practice, on paper. But you got a freak athlete. They're getting faster, stronger each year to awesome. where you can't really could like keep up. And I and like. They can legitimately actually forcing the NFL is forcing to be more like documented these concussions versus like, okay, he's just we'll put it at something else versus like, no, they're legit making sure that no, this is a concussion, document this. Because obviously with the NFLPA and everything that's going on and lawsuits, like you True. you can't blow this off. I, also I testing think, more. Like it is more of a focus on makes sense right. that there's going to be more family. They're testing so like, more, more. There's an independent spotter. Who's calling out live, like, hey, check that guy for a concussion? Yeah. Like, there, it is, there's more of a spotlight on it. So it does make sense that they're going to find more, even though they're I, trying to get down on it. Right. I because they're that, looking I, for it more. I think that the number will go. I think last year was a really high number, right? Yeah. And it's going to go I down. Think, it's going to get I worse before go, it gets better. I think it's going to go down this year. Like, we're not going to have as many. I think that it's, I think it's important. Um, I think I hope that I'm wrong, and they don't, they, and they care more about the player. And if they have a concussion, get him out of the game, like get him out and get him uh, properly cared for. Right? I right. believe that personally, but I think that like, like the two thing is bad, right? So like that is why I think like people are like, oh no, like t- look how bad two his concussions were, and look how bad he was playing. Um, and look what happened to him. And then they kind of over, like, they wanted to make sure anyone with concussion was out. It's because we have a corner, a Caleb Evans, who had three concussions, and they put him on IR. Right. So, well, like, it's people- also, like, it wasn't just the concussions. It was, like, it's a lot of optics on national television. Yeah, you can 100%. See live, like, not be able to walk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I agree with that. I agree. Like, the, the Tua thing is bad. Like, that's why the concussions were called. Like, people were like, get them out. Like, after the Tua thing, they were looking across the league, and anything that looked funny, they're like, get them out of the game. Like, get them out. Um, which is good. I don't even think it's a bad thing. I think that's a good thing. But my, like, my weird feeling inside says that, like, that's not going to happen again. So, like, so, say, the only problem was with St. Jude was – Concussions, or did he have like a uh, leg or arm stuff? It was concussion, and that okay. that's what okay. kept him out for a long time, right? So he's good. He's kept getting better. He's a guy who got picked on early, but he he he's smart. He's a very smart player and it's instinctive. Yep. But I, like him. He's I would slow, like but... for him to be the third best option and really just have that depth that quarter, right? So and I think he can make that leap to be like a true number two, even like a pseudo one, think... but. You can't put all your eggs in this basket without a backup plan or another option there. So what is your second biggest need? You think corner is your number one need? Uh, second need for sure is guard. We need a, a left guard bad. I don't, think uh, you slash, take that. I don't think you take that in the top 20. I mean, it depends. Like if you trade back, I mean, top 25, baby. Like you get the best guard there that could play. Uh, I don't. It's either like if they don't get their guy, their their corner that they want. I see a trade back. 
so they I, think, I, I think I think I think I think if you see I don't I, okay I'm not kept up on like uh, a lot of teams uh, draft needs this year this is like my worst so that's why I'm asking these questions like I think the top ten is going to be super weird right right for sure um, so like anything's possible so now the fr- the fringe cases are going to be like between ten and twenty five I think that's when the weird like players who are going to be taken that people aren't ready for. Like what range? Like 12 to 25? Uh, 10. I think 10 to 25 is just going to be like weird stuff. Like, and I don't mean like in weird, like bad players, but like, like weird. I think it could be really offensive tackle heavy, like all through there. I mean, yeah, like that's like one of the deepest positions of the draft. So, like, if you want to try to get your, if you want to get take your shot, like you want to take your shot at the upper echelon of the class, because obviously we hear that rises are there. Deep. I don't think that's deep. I think that's top heavy. I think that offensive tackle is top heavy and not deep. I think there's a lot of top heavy guys. Like top heavy is like, like if your top guys who are going to start are like three of them, that's good. And then and then you have a bunch of guys that are good. But like they're, you know, they're not going to be like ready to go right away. Which again, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, still, even though it's top heavy, it's like you're going to go after those top guys, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You're going to exactly. make yeah. that push for those top, like those guys you know for sure that can make a play. So it's like then that kind of shakes out. Okay, all the top guys we have highly rated on our board here are gone that we really wanted to get, but and you know, and it's like okay, we don't really have say like a guard. At 16, like hot rated high enough to go here, and any other position that we want to go, we could go make a reach for a top tight end, but we don't really want to do that. Quarterback, oh, is a quarterback here? Yeah, you know, not really. So then it's like, I think it's either going to be corner or trade back for the Washington Commanders at 16 right now. With and, what, uh, Jonathan, Jonathan, with what you're hearing me talk, do you think that I'm being uh, pill like, like? PFF graded pilled on like draft position because I feel like I'm a lot of like draft value to me depends on uh positional value and like would you take a like I don't think a safety that's gonna be good but just a good safety should be taken um in the first round right because of provision uh, uh like safety isn't valued as high like a Kyle Hamilton at top fifteen is you take that. You like uh, uh, Harrison Smith, top 15, like a good Harrison Smith, like a uh, young Harrison Smith, you come in. Mm-hmm. Yes. But, like, the best safety in this draft is Brian Branch, and he's not a safety. He's a cornerback. Like, I would not take him in the in the top 25 of this draft at all because he's a safety, and he's not even, like, a great safety. He's a, he's like a do-his-job safety. I, I don't think you're being red pill, but I think it is like two schools of thought. Like, obviously, one is like a more analytical, like you want cost analysis, like the value of draft draft position one, but also like the salary associated with that draft position, which is yeah. why B. John Robinson is going to be a big storyline to watch this draft because everybody can agree. He should be a top 10 talent in the draft, like at worst. Is he going to be a top 10 pick? Yeah, exactly. Probably okay. not, but maybe. maybe we, okay. You said the Falcons, yeah. the Eagles maybe could take him at 10. Like there's mm-hmm. teams that could be interested in him in the top 10. But just if he's taken top 10, the salary he's going to be paid. He's immediately going to be like a top eight paid running back in the league off rip. Will he? Yeah. Yeah. He- I think it's bonus, though, right? It was a fifth-year option. I think that's the way to go with superstar running backs. You get five well, it's, years. It's his contract. You, like, the contract he's going to get as a running back. He's going to have, like, a top eight running back contract if it's a top ten pick. Is that true, though? Yeah, because it's, it's – all the, I don't know if it's top eight. If it's top – if for sure top five. If he was top five pick, he would be. Top ten, it, it still feathers off, but it's still, like, at least top ten money because of the slotted deals. Because he will probably look at around like twenty ish, twenty to eight. But what would his cal- what would, Okay, so what would his salary? What his ca- because of what really matters is cap it. Who cares what they're getting paid? It's uh, because it's bonus, right? 
So like at some point he's gonna get paid. Like it's a bonus. Like it's a like a signing bonus that hits the cap. I guess like whatever. Like all of it's fully guaranteed. So it's like that's what also kind of hurts too. Like JJ is like not even the top. I don't think J- I think JJ is like guaranteed like two million dollars this year. Like yeah, not guaranteed. I mean, he I think got it's cap it. Like I think it's cap it twenty twenty something twenty two. Okay, I lied. He would be uh, the tenth highest paid running back. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. That's at ten. That's if he's the tenth pick. If he goes, who do we say the? I mean the Falcons, at, the eight. Falcons at eight. Falcons at eight. That would be a twenty three point four million dollar contract, which would put him. But what is his cap hit? That's what matters more. His cap hit. Twenty twenty three cap at tenth would be four million. That's a lot, actually. Yeah. And that cap is going to go up the entire yeah. duration of yeah. his first contract. Yeah, that's actually a lot. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So, um, but we'll go back to this main topic. Uh cornerback right yeah we, we were deluded so because i think cornerback is a high value i think top three positions or top four positions in the nfl you need to get is a cornerback right so it's quarterback offensive line uh tackle edge corner that's my four positions that you need so who's your who's your top three uh cornerbacks in this draft uh christian gonzalez devin witherspoon and and CJ's hot take is Deontay. Deontay Banks over Joey Porter Jr. That is a bad take. I wouldn't call it hot, but it's bad. Who's your three? Uh, it's those three. It's going to be one is Gonzalez, two is um, Joey, and uh, three is Wither, uh, Witherspoon, but I'm actually a height supremacist, so Witherspoon's if he was six foot, he'd be number one. Fair. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, it's just whatever your flavor is for that position, obviously. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, it's a consensus of, I would say there's, let me say five corners who probably, he probably, I mean, I mean, depending on what you think of Brian Branch, but like five to six corners that can go first four. round. Yeah. I think four are locks. But yeah, if yeah. You count I branch, agree. If you count Branch as a nickel corner and not a safety, he would be a fifth. I'd say is likely, but still not a lock. Right. And then uh, Branch should Branch, Branch should be drafted. Oh, Emmanuel uh, Forbes. No, he's uh, too small. One hundred and sixty-three pounds or some shit. Julius uh, Brents might he's sneak in there. there. No, in the For first round, Kansas State. Hey. The Seahawks have the twentieth pick, and Listen, who is boy, known for taking I, some wild swings on athletic freaks? The Seattle Seahawks. I was on Brant for a very long time. I'm glad he was good and he didn't suck. When you're going through all this number, I saw his height. I watched him play. I said, "Yeah, I like this guy." I think he could sneak in there. That's wild. I think he, he has a chance. Like he I, I, I'm not going to say he's a lock. I'm gonna say he could. I think Cam Smith probably goes before him, um, and probably DJ Turner probably goes before. Definitely goes before him. I think. Ooh. DJ Turner is also a potential guy. Yeah, they can sneak at the end. Like I'm gonna say, so like you know, obviously, like how we said, like quarter is a highly uh, prized, coveted position. So it just depends on how much a team loves that guy and are willing to go after him. But I also do think tackle for the commanders would be interesting depending on who's available. Like, obviously, if there's a, a guy that they really like that's there as well with a corner, I don't know which way they lead towards because I think if you could get you a young guy who can replace Leno at left tackle and uh, – <laughs> be able to alleviate his cap hit next year. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What is uh, Leno's cap hit next year? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, I think it's about 12 or $13 million, I want to say. It's not insignificant. Hold on. Are you counting guard with Sam Cosby playing guard? Do you still need a guard? 
so the right guard. Yeah, it's chance he'll kick it to right. See, that's the thing, right? There's a couple of different ways we could do it because of the fact that you know Ron likes the flexibility of a lot of guys. Like depending on how Cosby plays, they want to Cosby for sure is not playing right tackle. Right. So whether or not we get a guy who could we draft a right tackle or a left tackle, that's could be that could happen. Uh with uh Wiley, like he's you know, came in to play right tackle, but he also play right guard. So like yeah. we can also draft the right tackle, kick Wiley into the right guard, and then possibly, you know, depending on how the development of our seventh round pick last year, Chris Paul, there's a lot of people who like him in the building. We'll see how he develops, but we can also get another guy. We also have uh Gates, uh the Guard slash center that we signed from the Giants, they really like him. But he was he told in the press conference that he was coming in to play center, which means Chase is most likely gone with his big cap hit, uh, and is continuously you know injured. So like you got a center there. Obviously, you're gonna we're gonna get another guard slash center guy for depth reasons and like possibly a tackle to is rotate. Chris Paul, does he play guard and center? And just he can play center as well. Yeah, actually, no, I lie. He plays guard and tackle. He played tackle at Tulsa. But uh, most likely he'll be a guard. Same with Sadiq uh, as well. Charles Sadiq Charles, he uh, has tackle and guard flexibility. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know what happens. Like, I know the thinking of Ron. Like, he loves guys who are versatile, and because you know, obviously, with the amount of injuries that we've had, you know, they want to get that and they want to get value um so i mean i'm I don't, i'm interested to see what they do in the first round but like i'm not concerned about what they're going to do towards the end, throughout the draft because they've been doing a really great job of really finding value guys late in the sixth and seventh round guys so i'll, I'll love to see us continue that trend okay um sweet i'm looking at a mock draft right now on tankathon that has you guys going joey porter jr at 16. Yes, but sir. The seventeenth pick, Darnell Wright, offensive tackle. See, see, that's my dream scenario, right? If Darnell Wright and Joey Porter Jr. are on the board at sixteen, and eighteenth pick, Deontay Banks. I mean, I say you can't lose, but like all, I love, I like all three of those guys. I do like Joey Porter Jr. I think he's, I think he's going to be great. Um, it just depends on who's going to be the right fit for the team, right? And to be honest, like who can. Like make it through the transition of Ron Rivera getting fired next year. Like who's because who's going to still be able to fit the new system? Who can who can be great in any system? Well, Darnell Wright's been through that. Josh Heupel came in like midway through his career. Yeah. So he's he's a guy who's been through a transition. So maybe he could be the pick. Uh, Deontay Banks was he there before Loxley? Uh, Loxley's been there for this is year four now. So no, he's been like he's like right there. But he he's been admitted to Durkin though. And then had Loxley like be the coach that year, though. Right, that could happen. So, I mean, those are two guys. I think uh, Joey Porter Jr. Obviously, being a Penn State, the same guy. So he yeah. hasn't had to deal with like turnover like that in the, the coaching staff. Right. But I mean, it's it'd be interesting, right? Like you know, like how much do could Jahan Dotson get the ear of to try to to sway that pick, right? Or I don't know. I just I do think trade up, trade back, excuse me, is a solid forty-seven percent of possibility because of the fact that, like, like last year, I was kind of talking to Jonathan about this that you know we were at twelve last year and we had I love Chris Olave. I wanted Chris Olave there, but Ron also loved to other guys for you could possibly go back a little bit for it as well. So depending on how highly they have rated these guys, they could get another pick to possibly package to get a guy who they think is just as good, but you know, you can save a little money as well in the process and which those trades backs got us. And also another trade with the Panthers got us Sam Howell and Cole Turner. Yeah, uh, well, two guys we expect to contribute this year. So we can clip this. So we we went back and looked at uh, Washington. Obviously, having the 16th pick last year, they picked 12, but they did draft at 16. Having the 16th pick this year, right? And making the 16th pick last year, how they got there? They had the 12th pick, which they traded 
for the 16th pick, a third rounder, and a fourth rounder. So the 12th pick that they traded ended up being Chris Olave. Which I wanted so bad. The 16th pick that they made was Jahan Dotson. The third rounder, they took Brian Robinson. The fourth rounder, they traded back again and got two fourth round picks. So they ended up trading Chris Olave, Brandon Smith, linebacker for the Panthers in the fourth round, and uh, Mari Barno, uh, outside linebacker, pass rusher for the Panthers, um, 189th pick. So they traded those three guys, those three picks for Jahan Dotson, Brian Robinson, Sam Howell, and tight end Cole Turner. That's a lot of wasted picks. So how do you feel about that, CJ? How does that – hearing those trade the full threat. Right, I think the Dotson's full threat. really good. Yeah, like Dotson's really good. I think he was way better than I – like I didn't – because I didn't really do a lot of research about him previously. So I was shook. I, plus I would, I would prefer like a bigger body, right? But even though the way that Jahan Dotson plays, he – is very professional with route running, can make the plays in space, uh, very fast, very athletic. And I loved what he did this past year. And I think he could, he's going to on to do a lot of great things this year. Uh, and then Brian Robinson. I love Brian Robinson. Obviously, unfortunate events happened last offseason where he got shot twice. That kind of really derailed uh, his rookie year. But he still was able to be pretty solid coming back and come back pretty quickly. Uh you know, all circumstances considered. And, you know, hopefully another offseason, him getting healthy and getting stronger. We can see really what we saw in preseason before everything happened, like how dominant he was, how hard he runs. Uh, then Sam Howell, who's going in as an opportunity to be quarterback one this year and to build and be that guy or a quarterback who was highly rated before the draft, even some were saying being the first quarterback off the board. Uh, and things just didn't happen. And a lot of people have him ranked higher, rated him way higher than what he got drafted. And so, and then Cole Turner, I think who's a freak as like a pass catching tight end. Just, you know, he just needs to, uh, I, I didn't think the scheme really fit for him as a tight end last year. So now with Eric Bieniemy, who has experience of really utilizing freak tight ends and uh, his six six frame, Hopefully he can get an opportunity to show that he can be good and develop into like uh you know so a tight end that we can get some va- like some use out of. So I think you do. I think I liked in what everybody turned into because there's a lot of potential and hopefully this year you should see it come into fruition. Like for sure, I think we've hit on Jahan Dotson, but every like Sam Howe and I mean B Rob. Yeah, B Rob's a hit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. B Rob's a hit. Uh, and Sam Howell, he looked good in that one game. We'll see how that goes. And Cole Turner. So I guess a chance for this could be a really great trade back for us. But like for sure, like already, I think we already did well with two hits out of four picks. Okay. Like, All right. What do you think is going to be the biggest surprise in uh, the first round that are in the draft, actually? Like, so if you, your biggest, like, shock. Like the 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 Raiders taking the Clemson defense in uh, for the, that that one year. Oh, what do you think? Clayton Farrell. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think is gonna be like the biggest like what or not even the what just biggest moment that people like, go? I can't believe that happened. Okay, so this is actually a segment we wanted to do. I think we wanted to do top five like biggest surprises. Right. Um, so should we each give one and then we can kind of hive mind the the other two. I haven't really thought it out. Um, I got one if y'all want to. And we yeah, can go ahead. Two. Give us yours. You can start since you posed the like, question. Yeah, so, um, you know, normally the person who, you know, posed good last, but I'll do it now, you know, shucks. <laughs> um, uh, I, 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 I firmly, firmly believe the Vikings will trade up for whatever quarterback fails. Our falls, my bad. I hope they don't fail. No, and I, and, I, and, I, and I, I actually do think it's Anthony Richardson, and I think we're going to go get him. Crazy. That's that would be surprising, and I wouldn't hate it. Honest, well, I do hate it actually, but um, hey, I like it. I like it. Uh, for me, like I kind of was talking about these quote unquote surprises. I just think that, like, obviously, I felt like for the longest time, Sh- Shard was the guy, right? 
but was it for Bryce Young? And I think the fact that if the Panthers don't go Stroud at one, I think that's what will really kind of make the draft go crazy, or even Anthony Richardson at one. I think that's where we start to see like the craziness. But I want to say that the Tennessee Titans or the Atlanta Falcons going up to two to get whatever second best quarterbacks on the board. So I think go get their guy. I think if I heard like the Raiders, obviously Stroud, but also the Falcons are really hot on Stroud as well. They said if you know if he's there, they will they will take him. That's the apparently that's the only way they would go up, right? If the Stroud is available, but I think Stroud or Anthony Richardson makes too much sense for the Titans or the Falcons, and so I think the Falcons want like Ryan Carthen. Uh, wants to. This is his first draft with the Titans. He wants to make that splash, get his guy for the future, and I think it makes a lot of sense for. Obviously, it's going to be a, a rebuild, and coming from the 49ers, you get your guy and let him develop behind or play. Who knows? But Anthony Richardson for the Titans at two or three, I would say would be my surprise. I would bank on that. Okay. I think my surprise would be I don't know. I was going to say Keon White goes ahead of some other names. Uh, but finding out, obviously, he's an older prospect now. Not as old as Kyle uh, thought, but still older. 24. Uh, he'll be 24 and a half by the time the season starts. 25 by playoffs. So, not not a young guy. I was going to say he might go earlier than a, a Miles Murphy, who's been a one time a rejected top 10 pick. I was going to say that's a hot, my, was going to be my hot take. But I, I don't think I can get behind that now with this new information. Um, so, I'm going to go with Quentin Jonathan falls out of the first round. I like it. That is spicy. Oh, but w- when you say that, falls out of the first round, how many wide receivers get taken over him? That's an important part of that. I think three. Okay. I don't want I th- to hear I it. think three. And I'll, I'll name them if you want. No, no, I don't I don't want to. I don't want you to. I, I like the take. I don't want it to be wrong. Okay. I, I like that. I also can see, like, just the tight ends kind of get go for a little bit of a, like, later in the first round, go on a little run. There, especially it depending on when the first tight end gets Ooh, taken. I think that I, I only that only happens is if people trade back because the people later on have good pass catching, have good blocking tight ends. True. I mean, you also got to think too, right? Like I can see the Chiefs going tight end first round as a spicy pick because of the fact that yes, Travis Kelsey is the best in the league right now, but he is also thirty three, about to turn thirty four. So it's like, hey, like. Why not get him to learn other one of the best tight ends currently right now and then build towards the future? That could be a really spicy thing. Okay. Over under one and a half tight ends drafted in the first round. Over under? Over for sure. One and a half for sure. Over. over. Okay. What about two and a half? No. Two and a half, that's the that's the line right there. Two and a half, that's the line. I – that's tough. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I would say no. I think it was – I think for sure two is the number. I just don't know if three. Three is tough. Three is real tough. But it has to be a surprise team that don't go wide receiver but go tight end instead. Like maybe the Giants? The Giants are a team who need wide receivers. Right. But what if they went tight end instead? Well, they that just would be traded a, for. They just traded for the. They didn't just trade for. for uh, uh, there was that would be like what the hell, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can see like, like obviously the Cowboys could be in the running for that. They lost Dalton Schultz. Uh, you got the Chargers could always. They love their tight ends. Yeah. The I don't know how. I mean, the Broncos have a lot, but you know, Sean Payton likes tight ends. The Saints. He likes big tight ends. Right. Jimmy Graham. 
Yeah. I I also I also like a big large tight end. You got to think that Buccaneers. I don't know if the Buccaneers go tight. The the oh. Wallace, Buccaneers have a lot of problems. They need what to if, take care of. What if? Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. I don't like this tight end talk anymore. I just thought about something crazy. Let's let's hear it. Lamar Jackson will get a new team, and it yes. will be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Didn't he say he doesn't want to play for them? I didn't see that. If that's true, then I take everything I said back and eat the cold. It was them or the Dolphins. I know he said he didn't want to play for one of the Florida teams. I don't, I thought he didn't want to play for the Dolphins because two was on that team. I mean, that could be correct. Yeah. But that would be tough, especially a Miami boy like himself. But, I mean, I do see Lamar being on a new team. I, I, but I think that, that that is slowly starting to dwindle with these moves that the Ravens are tra- making. Because apparently, allegedly with the report that was uh, circulating on Twitter, is that Lamar had two requests of signing Odell and signing and getting or trading, trading for uh, Duke. Yeah. So, and they said, we can't afford both. So they obviously just made the signing for Odell, which I probably would have went for Hopkins. I feel like you get pennies on the dollar for him. But, uh, you know, I think they're closer to making amends, especially in Todd Bunker's offense. Todd Bunker's offense needs good wide receivers, and wide receivers can eat in that offense and the quarterback. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. I If you would have asked me a couple weeks ago for sure, like I still think the Falcons are the best, like the best situation for Lamar Jackson. Maybe they're, the they're, they're, cooking, they're cooking something up. The, the, that's the one team that is definitely cooking up something. The Falcons. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they have the second most cap space behind the Bears right now, so it's like they could do it. Okay. Do you think some teams? Or hesitant to trade for Lamar Jackson and trade up for the first overall pick because of next year's quarterback class. Do you think that impacted some teams and their decision to like, ah, we don't need to get a quarterback this year? It it depends on the level of your quarterback, right? So like I could see the like Titans Atlanta with Desmond Ritter. Right. So you say, all right, we're gonna give Desmond Ritter a full year to see what he has. And, and if, if he's not that guy. We'll we'll tr- take a swing for a Caleb Williams next year, a Sam Howell, Quinn Ewers. Sam uh, Howell, you kind of kind of you kind of got to commit to you got to a hey, you got to commit to the Caleb Evans. You can't be a decent team and try That's to. That's this thing, but you find out if you're a decent team or not. Yeah, like if I see what you're saying. Teams, like when the Panthers drafted Jimmy Clausen in the second round, <laughs> and knew Jimmy Clausen was not that guy, but continued to play him until he got hurt. That's a, what you would want. That's like the ideal situation. But I think with the Falcons in this situation in the NFC South, the NFC South is a three-pack of ass. And so that division is so wide open. Like, obviously, I, you could say the Saints are the front runner because they have the most established quarterback right now. Nah, the Panthers. Buccaneers are playing Panthers. Kyle Trask. The, we don't, I mean, honestly, they have a rookie. We don't know how good he's going to play day one, right? So you uh, have better, to better, better than the, the, the uh, car, car stings. I, I, I wasn't going that far, but he, I mean, he's more proven than every quarterback in the NFC South right now. I Andy will Dalton, say, excuse me. Excuse all me. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Andy Dalton start for you guys. So, like, and that's the thing. Andy, I would say the Panthers have the best roster. Yeah. But. In the South right now, maybe, maybe, but like, obviously, the Buccaneers roster is like either they can shed or they can hold on. Like, who knows what the fuck they're doing, right? And they could be the biggest surprise of maybe going to being aggressive if a quarterback were to slip out of the top 10. Cause I think they were 21, 23. Um, I think they're 21, but I'll double check. So they, they apparently want to ride it out with Kyle Trask and Baker Mayfield, which that just sounds like they're taking. What? Hey, would you like ass or would you like ass? You know what I mean? So, like, I can see them for sure the situation you asked about the Bucks, But that's the thing. They will like, go. You might know your guy is ass this year and be like, all right, we don't need to go get a quarterback this year because we know our guys are ass. Right. But they, that's the thing. So, all right, yes. So, like, the Buccaneers are that situation where they're for sure we are we want Caleb Williams. The See, and the Cardinals are going to be bad enough this year to be like, we are going to be in the Caleb Williams sweepstakes by not trying. 
Yeah, Kyle, yeah, no more Kyle Murray. No, we're gonna throw the Titans. quarterback away. The Titans, see, that's the thing. The Titans, do you want to make your splash now as your GM, or do you want to just because they're in the perfect situation to not trade up and just get best player available or whatever, what trade do. back. That's what they should do. And then that way next year you go to shed that contract of Tan- uh Tannehill. The league contract is pennies. You get your quarterback, and you start to build your team. You figure out whether Vrabel's the guy or not. You figure out your offensive coordinator situation. That's what I'm saying. Do you think teams like this, this is the reason these teams aren't like going out of their way to make an offer to Lamar Jackson? These teams aren't going out of their way to make an offer to the Texans right now. Because as far as we know, the Texans haven't had official offers for the pick that we know of right now. Right. I'm sure yeah, that's just- stupid. I think that's stupid. I think that if you think the Texans aren't taking a quarterback, you're stupid. I mean, let's say the text the reports are true and the Texans really do love Bryce. And if Bryce is gone, they that's the only quarterback they want at two. So Bryce is gone. They can take Will Anderson or they can trade back. Because the Texans that's a, again, that's a, that's again a, are a team with two first round picks right now. If you trade back next year, you're gonna or you trade back at two, you're gonna get at least a first round pick next year. So that means going into next year, you're gonna have two first round picks minimum. Plus, I mean, they could trade back again at twelve. Yeah, and get a third first round pick next year. They could. I'm not saying that's what they're gonna do. I'm gonna say they could. So if you want to commit to the tank, which I mean, let's see, they have that been. could be what teams. <laughs> but we won't know that until the draft. Like if they take a quarterback at two, that's often not what they're doing. If they trade back at two, it's like all right, the tank is in. Well, the tank has been going. It's just like now we got to reset the tank. They've been like, oh, we're taking. Uh, okay, now we're taking. Uh, okay, now for sure we're taking and we're going this direction. It was like we've been running in circles the last two years, right? And then, like, I see what you're saying, though. I think my mindset when you ask that question is, okay, what are those teams that are in that position? That's why I started naming off teams, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, if, to identify teams that – because you got to think about this too, right? All right, to be in a Caleb Williams six, like you, that means your team has to be mid or really bad. And there's teams with like the Buccaneers is a team that's legit a quarterback away from so, being affordable. Those- that are mid, that that are going to be in the Caleb Williams runnings based on their record next year. All right, Arizona Cardinals, Cardinals Tampa Bay Buccaneers, no. Raiders. That <sighs> no, no, they're going to be out of their own fault, be better than in that sweet stakes. But they're going to be – they're mid, but they're not going to be in that sweep okay, stakes. So we got the Cardinals, the Bucks, the Titans. Yes. That's three. The Texans, if they don't take a quarterback, will they be bad enough to be in that running? Yes. Well, I don't know. that. I mean, obviously the Jags should take it, right? The Jags should take the AFC South easily. The Colts, if they don't take a quarterback, yeah, if they the don't take, gonna, but I, I nah, doubt nah, it. The Colts, the Colts are leading this draft with the quarterback. I can see the Colts even making the move up to two. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like we won't know this until the for draft. sure, for sure, for yeah. But we're building storylines for the draft, right? So let's build these storylines. So yeah, if the Colts don't take a quarterback for sure in the sweepstakes for Caleb Williams, uh, how about the Falcons if they don't take a quarterback? Question, oh, Falcons for sure. But the question oh, is, yeah. is the NFC South bad enough? Yeah, for them to fuck around and mess up their Caleb Williams sweet snakes. because we saw that the Falcons are good, well coached enough. Terry Fondo is trying to make moves to win now with these guys that he's picking up with these one year deals to prove it deals to try to like get enough push to get you a playoff spot, whether how much how many wins you how many games you win or not. Because if let me ask you this question too, a follow up question: If the Falcons don't win this year is arthur smith gone or do they continue to hold on with arthur smith because i think fondo was after arthur smith was already i think if, uh if it depends on how bad they are if they're bad enough to get uh caleb williams they might give him that year to see how he does with caleb williams like hey were you really just a quarterback away but is it <sighs> yeah i mean i Maybe. see that that's what I'm, but if they're like where they are now like top 10 pick, but not like top three where you have to go try to trade up and get a quarterback. Like you're, you were good. You were feisty. You won some games. You probably shouldn't have won. Right. Let me ask you this question though. If he don't succeed with a quarterback, right? Cause you, 
do you consider I don't know I don't know if anybody consider Arthur Smith a quarterback coach, right? But I mean he got the most out of Ryan yeah. Tannehill. He didn't get the most out of Marcus Mario, or maybe he did. If he doesn't get the most out of Ritter, right? How much does that fall on him? Because then it's like, okay, we want to give you another young quarterback to vote. Obviously, he should be a short fire guy, but you want to make sure he you have him in the best hands possible. And will Arthur Smith, after another losing season, top ten losing season, be that guy to coddle the next quarterback? What is getting the most out of Desmond Ritter? Nobody knows what he is. Right. So, like, it it really doesn't matter how good or bad Desmond Ritter is. It depends on the record, I think. Because nobody, like, there's not going to have anything to compare him against. Yeah, I mean, I just, I think, they, I think the Falcons have put Arthur Smith in a weird situation. One have to inherit Matt Ryan when he first got there, then. They finally did, but they did try to make the move for Deshaun. That that failed. Then it was like Matt Ryan didn't want to be there no more, so they traded him. Then they went with Marcus Mariota, where they could have easily. Try, I mean, obviously that was the quarterback draft, which they just still they still drafted Ritter there with the not as great quarterback class. And then now they're back in a position where we got Ritter. We're still top ten pick. Quarterback class is a little bit better than it was last year. I don't know. I don't know. Arthur Smith's job is. A weird one, and I don't know. I just don't that, know. That screams. That screams. The GM gets fired. Everything that you just said says the GM gets fired. But this is a big Ritter, Fritter, 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 or is it Fritter? No, Fought, no Excuse me. Fought, no. Fritter's Panthers. Yeah. Fought, no, But he was. He got. He was there after Arthur Smith was <laughs> already hired. So Arthur Smith is not his guy. So, yeah, he's getting fired. I'm telling you right now, if he fails... I mean, they can clean house for sure. But Fonto has it... I guess Ritter would be a Fonto pick. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, if anything, I see a clean house. I don't see Ar- I don't see GM fired and Arthur Smith stay. So. Okay. Like you saying, is the NFC South going to be? It can it support them being bad enough? Because you said the other teams are so bad, Kyle. Well, we saw the Panthers get the ninth pick, and the Falcons get the eighth pick, and both of them being a little bit feisty. Right towards the end, there was either of those teams could have been that nineteenth pick. Correct. So if the Falcons do kind of commit to the tank or the Bucks next year, I could definitely see one of them getting a top. Probably top three, maybe the first overall pick. I definitely think they could get that first overall pick if they commit to the tank. Now, obviously, we just said Arthur Smith might be coaching for his job this year. Yeah. So, are the Falcons going to be bad enough to get that pick? Because I, I, it's too for me. It's too late to commit to a tank with Arthur Smith. He's year four. Well, yeah, but you can't take it year four. That's what I'm saying. They got he got screwed over. Unless they like, okay, we get it that we you had to inherit Matt Ryan. Actually, this is year three. I think it's year three. But you know, the Bucks, Todd Bowles probably already on his way out. Yeah. So yeah. I can see them firing him after like week four, promoting Byron Leftwich. He's gone. Team. He got fired, didn't oh, he? Byron Leftwich got fired? I'm pretty sure he got fired after this season. He might have. Who's still there? Shit, I don't know. All, all the other coaches were like old as shit, and they were there for Tom Brady. Who, who would be their interim? Probably the special teams coach, Bruce Arians. <laughs> He's still there, hanging out and shit. Which I mean, that could be interesting. Larry Foot on the staff. Oh, really? I thought was it Larry Foot at Arizona State for a little bit? Probably. Who was? It? No, it was, that was Pierre. Uh, he played for the Giants. That linebacker. I think he, that was the defensive coordinator for uh, Herb. Herb Edwards. Yeah, I don't. The offensive coordinator is some dude I never heard of. Dave Canales. Yeah. Who? 
I think Todd Bowles is doing that pretty sure. Yeah, I don't see one this time, so probably just he's doing what uh the Saints uh Dennis Allen is doing because he's also calling him. Uh they do have Harold Goodwin, who's been assistant head coach for four years. Uh he's the assistant head coach and run game coordinator. Uh Larry Foote is the pass game coordinator, so I could see him maybe be in the interim potentially. Uh, Keith Armstrong is a special teams coordinator. He could be. A yeah, I think player. he's probably the most likely. Because um, I know he was getting some buzz as head coach at like last cycle. Not last cycle, two cycles ago. Yeah. But either way, I think it was last cycle. It was because it was all three of them. Or all three. No, because no, cause that last cycle was the year before because uh, it was the year when uh, Brian Leftwich was going to get the Jags job. Yeah, that was last cycle. No, no. Doug Road, this is his year two. Yeah, he's going into his second year. So this is the first cycle since he was hired. No, he was – he had that season. He was going to be hired – it was like two years ago. It was the year before it was their last. Super Bowl year, 2021. That was like the year he was getting a lot of draft buzz or hiring buzz. It was last offseason because last offseason, Doug Peterson got hired instead of him. I guess so, yeah. I guess it's only been a year. felt like it was been longer. Because he was really bad this past year. He was really bad this year, and then got fired. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, he, the Jack should hire him now anyway. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so they could be bad enough, especially with none of those potential uh, interim head coaches having any type of head coaching experience previously. They could be bad enough to get that first overall pick for their team. Um, Kyle, you got any teams to throw out? Packers? Uh, no, the Packers rosters are pretty good. Um, oh, I was thinking really hard, and the Rams, but they don't have their first pick, oh, do they? Dude, I don't think they have a first round next year. I don't, I don't either. I think next year's the first year they got their first round pick back. I think this should be the last year that the Lions have their first round pick. Wait, did they give up their first round? No, because they didn't get anything for Jalen Ramsey. Uh, who else did they trade it for? Did they? I don't know what they gave up for Brandon. Or what's the name? Allen Robinson. Um, I don't think they gave up anything for him. They do have their first round pick next year. Yeah, so the Rams. Yep. Yeah. So there's a team that could be in there. Um, that's all I can think of now. That's like five teams right now. Right. And then obviously, depending on what happens throughout the course, like you're going to see, you know, changes. And I mean, I think the Colts will be up there still. Uh, I mean, that, that would be best case for the Colts. Like they take a rookie quarterback who is good, but they're still bad enough to end up with the top three pick, and then they can trade back and get multiple picks. To right. Them. Wait a minute. Did you just did you just say Andrew Luck? <laughs> they wish they they wish you could walk through that door right now. Yeah, but kind of like the Bears. The Bears got Justin Fields, showed promise. Oh, they're, oh had, yeah, they're going to be bad. Oh, they're gonna be still bad. had the first pick this year yeah. and were able to get extra draft compensation to build the roster around Justin Fields going forward. But the difference with Justin Fields and the Bears is they had to trade up for Justin Fields, so they were already at a deficit for draft capital. Right. So now they're basically like breaking even, whereas like with the Jags, the Jacks probably should have traded back last year instead of making that first pick. No. If if there was somebody who offered them something, yeah, they no. should have traded back. No. And got as much draft capital to build around Trevor Lawrence as possible. They already had a lot of draft capital last year, though. They could have got oh, yeah. more. They don't need. You can that. never have too much. Yeah, they can actually. I've been a Vikings fan for too long with 18 picks a year. Yeah, but half of those are in the fifth and sixth and seventh round. If you have, you can't have too much, cap, too many picks in the top 100. Not a thing. And guess what? If you do have a lot of top 100 picks, you can trade them for a DeAndre Hopkins, a Jalen Ramsey. You can never compile too many top 100 picks. Not a thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 
Capital's capital. So that would be the ideal situation for for a team is to be bad enough to get the first pick one year, get your quarterback, and be bad enough to get a top like two, three pick the next year. I would say for sure top ten. Well, top three is going to maximize your value in a trade back. But get a top ten pick for sure and be able to trade back and get more draft capital to build around that quarterback. Now, with the Panthers trading up to one, it's going to be a similar situation to the Bears and Justin Fields, where you're already at a deficit of draft capital. So even if the Panthers do stink next year and get – well, they don't have the top pick already because they traded up for – yeah the first overall pick. So that's why it's better to earn a top five pick than trade for one. For sure. But, hey, if if it doesn't work out, Brian Burns, baby, where you want to go? Speaking of uh, defensive ends that need to be traded, where do you think um, Chase Young is going to be this year? Uh, The commanders. Next question. (laughs) How good do you think he's going to look in purple for a second round pick? He's going to look good. Not right? good at all. Disgusting, actually. I actually want to, I want to throw up. Next question. It's going to be nice. Uh, let, okay, let's talk about some of our favorite guys, uh, some of our draft crushes this year, and then we can wrap this thing up. Uh, so I'll give it, I'll give the floor to you, Jonathan. I'll let you start it. Uh, is, do you have any draft crushes uh, this year? Uh, cycle. Is there any guys that you just kind of love? It doesn't matter like if they're top guys or good guys, but just a, a talent that you are interested to see how they do at the next level. Uh, yeah, I really like TCU running back Kendra Miller. Um, he's coming off an injury in the college football playoffs, so his draft cycle has been a little slow. It hasn't been that much hype on him, but he's got size. He's got good speed, not elite speed. Uh, I think he could be a potential three down back And there's not a lot of guys you can say that about in this class. So I like his potential as a three-down guy. Uh, I think a team could get a steal with him in, like, the third, fourth round. Okay. I like that. Kyle, you got a a guy you love that you feel is not getting enough hype? Um, I I don't have one. And that's uh, overshown. Uh, I just messed his name up, but um, I like him a lot. Yeah, I said shown. It's over. That's how you spell it. I know. I messed. I don't know. I don't know. Pretty, uh, anyways, sure his name is Demarion Overshow. Yeah, I said it funny. I said show or something. I don't know. Anyways, but yeah, I like him. I like him a lot. Um, uh, I think his draft class is pretty weak. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, uh, man, there are any receivers you like? In the later, I, I, um, not I was a uh, a Trey Palmer guy, but I didn't like his testing recently. So I don't know, man. I'm not I'm not super hyped uh, about a lot of people right now. Okay, okay. Sad to bring it down. I'm, I'm normally the guy who uh, loves all the uh, bad people, but I, what I about uh? I don't want to say his name because I mean, maybe he was all over him early draft process, but uh, like a, a a Christian McCaffrey type running back. Uh, so I, I've fallen off of that too, Evan Hole. Um, um, I, I like a ty- uh, uh, Spears uh, more than Ty Jay Spears. Yeah, he I might. Think he everybody might likes Ty Jay Spears though. I think Evan Hole is like a day three guy. Ty Jay yeah, Spears probably a day two guy. I agree. I agree with everything you said. So you can you can still like Hall, just and be high on him and not think he's better than Tajay Spears. I don't think the two are uh, mutually yeah, that's exclusive. A, that's a good point. Um, I'm trying to really I'm trying to hype myself up a little bit more for the later on guys. Um, tight ends. And, tight, tight no, end I, no. I uh, see. I, as a Vikings fan, it's hard to. Really enjoy tight end. Um, with what we have, we signed a tight end. Um, I'm trying to think, man. Really put me on here. Uh, I've been watching tape, but I just um, I'm not sold on all the guys, honestly. Um, 
Ooh, offensive lineman. I know a guy you really like in the offensive lineman. Okay, there we go. See, I haven't watched a ton of offensive linemen, but I do have a big giant fan, and uh, he plays for Alabama. He's a tackle. I think he fits as a guard better than uh, most. Um, mm-hmm. Steel, Steen. Steen, uh, yeah. I, yeah, Steen. I, I love him. I love him actually. Uh, I think that he is probably a day one uh, starter for most teams that need an interior guard. Um, better for a uh, team that runs spread, though. He's he, um, he's not long enough to play tackle, but he's a long guard. So I really enjoy him. Okay. I like that. Uh, one of my guys is I've been on it five since I see him at uh, I see him his high day at Senior Bowl. Andre Ziva, uh, Princeton wide receiver, uh, looked really good, fluid, smooth, six three guy, uh, ran like a four four, uh, so good speed, good height. Interested to see where he goes. I'm most likely a day day three guy. You know, uh, but I think if given opportunity, I think he can. Uh, I think he can flash. I think he could. I think he's really smooth with his route running. I really like that about him. Uh, I am actually. I've been kind of getting on the Keaton Mitchell, Keontae mm-hmm. yeah, Mitchell the, the train. West Virginia running back. Uh, ECU. ECU. My bad. ECU running back, super fast, mm-hmm. and like I think. At least I'm looking at it more for a commander's guy, a really a, a legit change of pace guy who could possibly have special teams uh, ability for us. I I really like that. Uh, obviously, Sean Tucker is also a running back that I'm really into. Uh, Syracuse running back. And uh, obviously, Deontay Banks is one of my guys. But Jalen Duncan, uh, not a homer whatsoever, uh, but I think he could be a, a project right tackle. Uh, long, uh, athletic, uh, given the opportunity to be nurtured and grow, like I think he could be a guy. And uh, I'm interested to see where he where he uh, lands this uh, this NFL draft. So it should be a lot of fun. I know a quarterback you're interested in as well. Oh, we I listen. If EB wants to draft this guy in like third or fourth round, just to have another guy, a body, and possibly that could be more than that. Uh, DTR should be that guy wholeheartedly. I think, honestly, right now, DTR is probably QB6 in this draft. And with the possible, yeah, QB6 for sure. Uh, I think, I think, uh, he shows a maturity of how he plays. Uh, I think he's really intelligent, athletic, uh, can throw it, good placement. Obviously, he's a little shorter. Uh, but I think he, I think he could be a guy, especially playing with Chip Kelly and how a lot of the offenses are, you know, similar now in the NFL. So I am curious to see where he could go. I would love to see him within Miami. Obviously, I want to see him in Commanders first and foremost. Miami would be really interesting to see him there. Also, I can see him signing with uh, if the Texans want to get a guy later if they don't get their guy early. Like just to kind of throw because they did that same thing with Davis Mills, right? They threw a uh, threw a wrench out or just you know hope to see what they could get out of Davis Mills, and uh, so yeah, that'd be interesting. Uh, so yeah, that's those are my guys. So uh, anything else you guys want to talk about uh, on this show? Because you know we're coming up to the draft, our live draft or our draft mock draft, our final mock draft uh, is coming up very soon so uh anything you guys want to get out before we get to that um, obviously i didn't in my hot take i said i think quentin johnson could fall out of the first round is there any other guys you guys have seen who are popularly mocked in the first round that you think could fall out a fall out um i wouldn't say popularly mocked but a hundred hooker is not going in the first that is a Agent I, special. That, that I think he's become popularly mocked in the first. Yeah, exactly. especially That's to fake. the Vikings. So it's fake. Yeah, because the word is we're taking a quarterback, and they they can't do the moving of uh, us going up, so they're just giving us what's left. I can see. Uh, like I don't know. I maybe a Brian Brisset, maybe. I've been seeing him uh, some uh, some places not getting mocked to the first. 
Uh, I don't know. Other than that, uh, off the top of my head, no, I can't think of anybody else. I'm gonna go with one, and it might be spicy. Kalija Kansi could fall out of the first round. Uh, pit defensive tackle. You know, I've. Yeah, like I've seen him in the end of the first lately, but other than that, like I have like not a lot I've seen him as being like in the first. It, you said what was, where did he go to school? Pitt. Pitt. Wasn't there a Michigan defensive tackle? Mozzie Smith. Yeah, I've been seeing his name get uh, thrown in there. I can see him uh, maybe not going in the first. Who knows? Or you know, like. The tackle, defensive tackle is an interesting position this year. I think, like, he was a guy who wasn't really mocked in the first round. Then he had an insane combine. Right. Then people kind of went back and watched his film and were like, yeah, maybe he's not a first rounder. But, like, look look at his athleticism. Like, look, the potential he has based on his athleticism doesn't match his film. Right. So he's a guy who I think, especially because he's kind of like a tweener, like he's he's a small defensive tackle, but he's not big enough to play defensive end either. Uh, I'm going to throw out a name here. Obviously, he's much more athletic than this guy, but he's a guy Kyle and uh, the Vikings are very familiar with. Um, it could be a Hercules Mata'afa. Right. things. Correct, but I think Kalaji Kansi might have a similar problem to him where he dominates on the inside <laughs> because he's smaller and more athletic than interior offensive linemen, but he's not big enough and quick enough to hold up on the outside full-time either. So he's kind of a hybrid. Obviously, with Mata Afa, we saw that it was a bad hybrid, positionless, like he couldn't succeed. Now, with Kansi, he might – I'm not saying he is that, but I'm saying teams could view him that way. Right. So he might be a guy that blew up at the combine, was mocked like top 20 for pretty much every mock since the combine, and now as we get closer, I can see him falling out. <clears throat> All right, I want to give you – I'm just going to say something stupid, and if it happens, I got it on camera, and, you know, I could just say, hey, look, I was I – did, I did it right. Uh, with the fourth pick in the NFL draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Anthony Richardson. And in that deal, the Indianapolis Colts traded the fourth overall pick, uh, the whatever first round pick next year, uh, a second and a third round pick for Lamar Jackson. Why would they, they, why would they add? Why would they add to the picks that they don't have to? They don't have to. Uh. Well, you have to give up. They have to give up two first. That's all you have to give up. So why would you give up more? To uh, you know, make sure that you can get them. Let's be like, no, it's not, not going to happen. No, no. You you offer all you do is offer them a, a fucking stupid contract, and and you give up two first. Fair, two first. Lamar Jackson. Either way, Colts make the moves to get Lamar Jackson. The Baltimore Ravens are selecting fourth. They go. Anthony Richardson is still there. And I'm just going to put that out there into the universe. If it happens, I look great. Highly unlikely, but just just say it if it happens. Okay. Uh, Let's see. Do we have any surprise names who we haven't seen locked in the first that we think could go in the first? Anybody have any of those? Uh, the Northwestern defensive end, or whatever he is. Are they me what? Ade Moare? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go. I don't know. I haven't really seen him get mocked much ever, maybe. Andre Carter, defensive end for a bar. I've that name. That's the that guy. Guy. That guy's so bad. That guy, that guy shouldn't probably be in the draft. He probably should go serve his military. Well, he'll be in a draft regardless. Yeah, he's going to be in a draft. Yeah, that guy um, stinks. I watched him. Uh, he looks okay, bro. 
Do y'all remember that uh that guy that was all over the place? He's like the number one recruit or whatever. He had like blonde hair and he's like slapping the bags or whatever. And everyone's like making fun of him. That guy was actually he was a high school guy, uh, defensive end, and they were making fun of the way he looks. He's yeah. like super skinny. That's what yeah. that guy reminds me of. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I'm going to go with – I mean, he's mocked in the first round a lot, but it's still not that popular. I can see Trenton Simpson going in the first round. Okay. Oh, um, uh, yeah. I can. A tackle, hey, why is he – A tackle teams aren't talking a lot of – or the media is not talking a lot about is Syracuse's Matthew Bergeron. I think he could go top 50, uh, maybe sneak into the first. Yeah, there hasn't really been any linebackers really <laughs> like that has been really mocked in the first round. Yeah, uh, maybe they, they're bad. They're bad. They're bad. And I love. I, I. They're bad. I'm gonna tell you that right now. They're bad. They're, this, this class is. This draft is weird because, um, it's good at corner. There's like there's corners into day three. I do believe that that you'll get good corner play to day three. Um, there's all of the tackles. There's a this quarterback class is technically heavy. Um, and then I think the wide receiver class is very top heavy, I and mean, then that's it. All right, who's your favorite guy? Who's probably I think this running back class is very on, deep as well. On day three, oh, I agree. who's your favorite day three guy? Any position? Day three, so um, fourth round or later. Uh, it's probably a running back. Um. Uh, uh, Kansas State, uh, Deuce Va- Va- Vaughn or whatever. Deuce Vaughn? Van. Yeah, that's my guy. Just talking for the size of purposes. Wow. Yeah, he's speedy, fast, and quick. I like speedy, fast. Because you hate shorts. You like and he's the shortest of the ball. Yeah. Yeah, but listen, guys. There's this. I, I have. I, 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 I call my draft takes. They're big on this one thing. Boom and zoom. I would like yeah. them to do both. If they can't do both, I want them to do one. I think he can do both. Yeah, me too. But he's just tiny, so I don't know how long he can do both. He's yeah, stout. He, yeah, uh, yeah, he is. He looks. Yeah, he can jump really I mean, far. If he, I think, for him, obviously a Darren Sproles type role, obviously just because of the obvious yep. comparison to size. Uh, but like, if I can see him just being that utilized back, like I can see him with. The Eagles. The Eagles love their backs. Uh, who did they saw? They got David Montgomery. No. Oh, no. He went to the Lions. So yeah. they signed Rashad Penny. Rashad Penny, yeah. But they also have KG for that. KG that left for this rookie deal. And that's. I think they re signed Boston Scott as well. So They might have. And they still have uh, Trey Sermon. Don't sleep on Trey Sermon. Bro, oh, I, I, I love Trey Sermon so much. It's oh, so funny. Uh, a guy that I don't know wh- where he will land, but I really love Aubrey Miller, uh, linebacker from Jackson State. I think he's Isn't he think really he's, small. No, he's 6'2", 6'2", 215. He has a little light for a linebacker, but he, yeah, he can I have this guy. Uh, shout out to Spencer. Spence, uh, he, he does this, uh, uh, this chart. He charted out linebackers, right? And um, there's a threshold for him. And a linebacker has to be 230 pounds or just don't even look at him. Uh, yeah, he, wow. he looks like linebackers to be 230 pounds. <laughs> okay. So he's saying uh, your guy's light for him. Doesn't yeah. mean his weight threshold. No, no, no. Like the NFL literally says that they don't work. They don't work. There's no proof of it working. If they've done earned 230 pounds, don't even look at him. He won't have to play in the NFL. 230, I mean, I think that's – I mean, that could I can, be – I can pull the stats up. I can pull out – like No, no, I, 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 I get what you're saying. I do think, for me personally, I think 230 is a bit heavy. I would say like 220, depending on what kind of player they are. Obviously, a bike linebacker, a middle linebacker, you want them to be a little bit more stout. But if you're like 220 and you can go sideline to sideline and you're like 
really good in pass coverage. But what but the, what this thing that he tracked out says is there isn't anyone under the 230 that's playable. I don't know if that's true. I, I'll, I'll show you the list um, later on. I mean, it might be. Maybe 230 is the mark. Yeah, this guy I mean, did a lot of painstaking uh, stat watching, so I believe him. We'll see. We'll see sh what shall happen. Okay. I'm going to go with uh, another day three guy for me that I really think could have a successful career is uh, Purdue wide receiver Charlie Jones. Oh, yeah. yeah the new Charlie. Adam Thielen. Yes, he reminds me a lot of Thielen. Whichever he's not as fast. Thielen in a 4 3. He don't run a four three no more, and he ain't run a four three in in a couple years. If he hasn't honest. ran very far in that long, yeah. But I like Charlie Jones. I think he could be an Adam Thielen type receiver yeah. in his career. I have to. I, I looked at another website for Aubrey Miller's height and weight. He's actually five eleven two twenty five. Yeah, I knew he was very short. He reminds me of the little little John or whatever the, the Panthers. Twenty four seven got this man listed at six two. This must be his high school coming out of high school. Dude, bro, that's like yeah. when, um. That's all about twenty four seven. Yeah. Jeff Gladney listed now. Rest in peace, Jeff Gladney. Yeah. They had this man listed at six two. The man listed at five ten on a, on at the combine. I need to see what his pro day stat because they only got you know, ESPN has him at six two two fifty two twenty five. They didn't update that thing. Uh, so he didn't get a combine invite. Is he a pro day? Let's we'll see. Over Miller pro day. <coughs> Sorry that my dog is absolutely on bananas. It's okay. Okay, so Draft Network has him six two two twenty five. They don't do uh, actual research. Draft Network only does what the college list is in as. Yeah. Unless they have a combine measurement. They will yeah, do combine exactly. measurement. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he didn't have a combine invite, so that's why I'm not sure. I can't even, I don't even see any pro day stuff for him. Unless he went to, uh, here we go, NFL Scout. Yeah, this guy five eleven and a half. Five eleven two twenty nine. So I'm I'm going to say five eleven. I can give him six foot. <laughs> I bet you will. <laughs> six two on uh, Tinder. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I like him. Uh, I hope he. I hope to see where he goes. He get an opportunity to play. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, he ran a four seven forty. Woo! Hey, bro, I I said no, I didn't. There's a wide receiver in this draft. Uh, he's coming from a little school. He's five seven, and can you guess his forty time? Just guess it. Five seven. He's five seven. Guess his forty time. He's either really fast or really slow. Guess his forty time. I need you to like, say numbers out loud. Four four six three. It's a four eight one, bro. Jesus, what are you doing? What are you doing? Run, that's out here running. That's crazy. You should even be. You should just <laughs> a wide quit, receiver? retire, five, retire. Seven, five bro. seven four eight, no, bro. That's like uh, that running back for Georgia running his four his four and seven he on pro day, bro. That guy ruined his own. Why did he run, bro? I would have said delete that. He, he put on ten it. pounds and then ran like a four seven. He's like he's like all right. Everyone delete. Everyone delete it. Everyone delete it. I trip. <laughs> right. You can run another one then, you know. Uh, <laughs> nah, I tripped uh, and got hurt. Yeah, ah, oops, ooh, ah. So, I, 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 it, let's, play, let's play a game. This is way faster. I'll play way faster than a game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Put, I'll put the pads on. Let's go. Uh, De Denzel Perriman is the, the linebacker you were talking about that he reminds you of, though, Kyle. Yeah. Oh, here's my take. Stetson Bennett is getting drafted. Be, be the uh, the fifth round's the latest. I'm gonna say Stanton Vincent gets drafted. That's the fucking <laughs> take. Let me put some money on that goddamn. I love game. it. What do you say I to what team? I, I'm not a team. I don't. Oh, just just hey. fifth round. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bro. 
He's getting drafted in the fifth round or um or or later. I love it. Does he get? Right, how about this? Does the Quavius Bennett get drafted before Tanner McKee? No. no. Interesting. You think, think Tanner McKee's better than yes, Seth Bennett? Yes, all day. Yes, Seth Bennett. If we're talking about Bryce Young potentially not being the first quarterback drafted because of his size, <laughs> just, but that's the first overall pick. But I'm talking Seth like Bennett Tanner McKee is like fifth round, old, sixth round. Has Tanner McKee is not no. Tanner McKee is a, a, a top two, pick, a top uh, uh, two. Pick, uh, I see. I keep saying the wrong thing. Top He's a top. Round. Yeah, the first two round pick, bro. Oh yeah, that's now nah, you're just spitting white rhetoric now. Tanner McKee is not even wanna, good. He's day three he, at best. Came to my he came to my fucking um facility for a top thirty. I don't want him, but I'm telling you, he's. <laughs> Bro, yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, my question would be: uh, There's three guys who are not consensus, like top two round guys at quarterback, right? So, DTR, Stetson Bennett, Max, Jalen. Oh, uh, Jalen, Jalen Hall is probably good before Duggan. Oh, Jared Hall. Jer- isn't Jared Hall? Yeah, Jared. Uh, uh, yeah, he's. he's He's 25 because he went to Baylor. 24? I mean, not Baylor. Uh, uh, he, went, he actually went on his mission trip. I'm like uh, some terrible boy. Zach Wilson? There. He was pounding the tape for him. Yeah. yeah, for in the third round. Check the check the fucking um, thing. Um, who do you think goes first out of those three, though? You can throw Jaron Hall in there. But out of those, those actually, four, then. Who uh, is it? If you're saying uh, so, Dor- Thompson Robinson, Stetson Bennett, Max Duggan, Jaron Hall. I think DTR, D- DTR, but then um, definitely. I think DTR is a borderline late second round pick. Okay, who's crack. the next one? It's definitely Stetson. Yeah, I don't. I think Max Duggan is like a seventh, the sixth round guy. He, no, I think he's a seventh round guy. Uh, he's gonna be what they thought Purdy was. I take. I think that's Hager. Jaren Hall. I don't care. No, okay. Jay Hager. I'm no, taking no, no, Duggan I, before Jaron Hall. I do not care. That, um, but I, I think that the age. I, I think. Um, I don't know. But, but they didn't think Purdy was going to be good. They wouldn't draft him, Mister Irrelevant. So it's like correct. They, they, so like they didn't draft him. Be like uh, there because like oh dude, he, he could hey. be good. Hey. And guess what? He went last and aced his S2 score. So maybe S2 <laughs> scores don't matter. I'm gonna what? It doesn't matter in draft, but in ability to play the game, it does matter. But I'm gonna let you know that in 2021, I went in the Minnesota Vikings to draft Brock Purdy, but he went back to school. I have actual proof of me saying I really like Brock Purdy. I like his talent. I remember I was, that. You yeah. did like Brock Purdy a lot. Brock Purdy yeah. went to Iowa State, right? Yeah. Yes, I watched it, and I watched the damn tape. I watched Iowa State. I watched Brock Purdy. You wanted because... Brock Purdy and Hakeem Butler. I remember you wanted that combo. Yes. I don't think they did. They play together. Maybe. I don't uh... think so. But, bro, I know you I like the both. Believe... Am I? <laughs> am I the quarterback whisperer? I had a uh... no. I had <laughs> no. Shut up. No. I had... I know. <laughs> I'm gonna shut this shit down right now. <laughs> Number one, Zach Wilson fan. Zach Wilson pounded the table. Now you're on. You're third. on the table, bent over, getting pounded by your pick. Mon, Mon third round. round. I did not like Mon. I did not like Mon. Stop it right now. Didn't you though? No, I really didn't. I really don't remember, but I thought you. No, it was a that was a troll because everyone hates okay. Kirk Cousins. I joke okay. on that. Like, okay. so, but you're not wrong about that Zach, take. Okay. Zach Wilson sitting behind Kirk Cousins, and you take him in the third, is not a bad pick. The fact that he has to start and be good on a team that's playoff ready is the problem. Time out. You want to trade up into the top five for Will Levis. So, yes, you are not the quarterback. <laughs> Listen, Will Levis gets to sit for a year and eat bananas uh, without um, peeling them. That's pretty good. That's extra protein. That's how you get jacked. You don't waste nothing. Maybe he's a green king out here. Think about the player. 
he would. He should go to California then. No, he would decompose his banana peels in his uh, homegrown garden. Now he just uses but, his old poop as fertilizer. Yeah, about to say. I was <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's already one more. quarterback in the NFC North that does that. Uh, but for how long would he be in the NFC North? NFC North. Yeah. You talking about Aaron Rodgers? Yeah. Oh yeah. But, yeah. but uh, actually, the coolest thing that the Packers could possibly do is uh, make draft a wide receiver first round. No, yeah, draft a wide receiver first round and make uh, if he doesn't retire, right? Make him sit the bench while they start Jordan Love. Now, that is the big. That would be the biggest power move, and I and I would stop hating the uh, Packers for as long as that was going on. Yeah, you just got Aaron Rodgers just doing shrooms on the sidelines. I mean, he won't be yeah. there, but he would be probably at his house doing shrooms. Oh, dude, he would, dude, he would not. Can you imagine him not showing up? He's like, <laughs> not dressed, bro. They're like, uh, Aaron Rodgers isn't here. Like, uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Ain't no problem. <laughs> yeah, after that walk off with him and uh, Randall Cobb crying. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is it, buddy. Crazy. Um, and then Hooker to the Lions on their second first round pick. How crazy would that be? Not that crazy. I don't hate what that. What pick is that? The six? No. 18? I thought it was I 18. Think, but I think it's 18. I thought it was like 20. It's 18. It's 18? It could, be, it could definitely be 20. It's 18. I'm looking at this it. Is the, I'm telling you, bro. As a weirdo draft enthusiast, this has been the worst draft for me. I like the worst. Like This mock has them getting Jalen Carter and Deontay Banks. That would be filthy. That That's would be fair. sick. Dude. I don't like that. That would be absolutely sick. And it makes sense. I think that Jalen Carter to the Lions is That's really true. good. But I'm also hearing a lot of hype about uh, Tyree Wilson. Uh, Tyree Wilson seems like a Falcon to me. Like I, I like I believe that. But the my heart. I, him going fifth to the Seahawks in this mock, so he's gone. Yeah, five that. six. I think that's his range for sure. Uh, it just depends on. It depends on who falls, right? Like, say, imagine like somehow Will Anderson slips to five. Like, I don't think the Seahawks could, unless depending on how high they have Wilson. Like, because I know I that Wilson people, is super have, high on. Uh, the I Lions a lot board. Of people say that uh, Anderson isn't their one. Yeah, I see like, a lot of people say Wilson is their number one edge rusher. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. If you run like a 4 3, Will Anderson's not really a 4 3 defensive end, like Correct. prototypical yeah. size. He's more of a 3 4 outside linebacker size. Yeah, Vikings. So, I mean, I get like 4 3 guys want to tie Wilson instead. He's six five and a half, two seventy. Will Anderson six three and a half, two fifty. Yeah. Um, that is so yep, sense. Sense. But Miles Murphy is six five, two seventy. Miles Murphy to the Chiefs. 32, 31, technically a bar. Yeah, I mean, I think we're. I think for sure the Lions do get corner. So I guess it depends on like if they get. So imagine the Lions at six still have like. The top two edge rushers and the top two, three corners on the board at six. Like that's what's gonna be like a ooh. Situation. Yeah, the lion the lions are set up to do well. Hopefully Dan it sucks. Because I kind of, like when a team sucks for so long, I know they're in my division, but like are they really a rival when they can't win games? It's like so I don't really care too much about the Lions, but when they start beating us, it's gonna be really sad. And they beat the Packers to keep them out of the playoffs. They yeah. beat us too. They beat us at the end of the year. And it's kind of embarrassing. I, honestly, this division next year, I think it's just going to be between the Lions and the Vikings. Maybe. I, uh, yeah, I agree. I think the Bears are awful. I don't care what anyone says. So I, I, I'm rooting for. I'm, I'm rooting for the Lions for sure. I mean, but they I have, hope that the coach is actually good and not just like insane. I mean, so far, I mean, it's just they got to be able to start faster. If they can start faster, get a couple more key wins, I think their biggest Achilles heel is going to be their defense because we know Brad Johnson's cooking on the offensive side of the ball. Aaron Glenn, now you're going to have to wake your ass up, right? Like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Didn't they fire their uh, defensive coordinator? No, they fired the DB's coach. Yeah, the He's one that next. We hired, too. We hired him. 
like any like oh, we, like quote unquote we hired him and he chose the um the, the line job over us. Yeah. We probably believe what Dale Campbell was selling. I mean, yeah. it doesn't help that I mean they went younger. Like they do got a what was it Kirby, uh, Kirby Joseph? Is there quarter? Yeah, which is a, I'm, I'm pretty, and I'm pretty sure he's a Vikings guy. So like he was, he, he's been he really was good for them. Syracuse, right? One of the orange teams. Maybe, I'm not sure. But yeah, I don't know. That it's a good team, and they got opportunities to get two quality starters. You know, possibly a quarterback for the future, another quarter, an edge, attack. I they could do a lot of different things. And I think they're set up, which I mean, they got Sutton, the quarter from the Steelers. I don't even know if he's good, but apparently a lot of people like him. Uh, they saw it. He's a good nickel. So I don't know who's going to play outside for them. So uh, they drafted another Syracuse guy two years ago, Ifiatu Melifonu. He played corner as a rookie, but they put him at safety last year. I could see him maybe playing more corner again next year. Uh, with Okuda being gone and them not having that much depth there. Um, but, yeah, I think they definitely lead the first round of the corner. Oh, for sure. Whether it's at 6 or 18. Right. They're good. Both good spots. Because yeah, I'm, I'm going to look at their quarterback, cornerback roster right now. And I'm going to tell you – actually, I'm going to want you guys to tell me how many of these names you know. I can tell you none. Side Sutton, because I just Khalil saw him. Dorsey. No. Will Harris. No. Jerry Jacobs. No. Chase Lucas. Chase Lucas, yes. He was a guy from Arizona State. Uh, they drafted two years ago. Uh, Mac McLean. The basketball player? <laughs> Mac McClain. <laughs> McLean. That's his cousin. A, a diehard. Uh, North Carolina A&T, though, stand up. Uh, Emmanuel Mosley. Okay. Cam Sutton. Yeah. Jaron Williams. Yeah. So just Sutton and uh, – I think those are NFL players, right? You're naming NFL players? What were you doing? <laughs> I, I, I heard those names. Uh, what were they? I mean, Will Harris is like a—he's more of a safety than a corner. I feel like I, he came in the league with the. Uh, I forget. Might have been the Eagles. Uh, Khalil well, Dorsey's like a, a nickel corner. He's five nine, small boy. I honestly see them drafting two corners in this draft. I can see it because, no, like I no, said, they have, they have Cam Sutton, who's more of a corner, like nickel guy. And well, unless, but you also I think you maybe did. And he's more of a nickel guy, but did they offer him a chance to play outside? And maybe that's what he wants to do. Maybe because I mean, him and Mosley, I think both they're both five eleven, uh, one eighty five to one ninety range. Um, so they're both similar size. So right. I can see them being like, all right, we're gonna give you both a chance to play outside. Um, and at worst, you'll probably start inside. Yeah. Unless they draft two corners, then one of them might have to go to the bench. Because if they could get Gonzalez at six and uh, Deontay Banks at 18, holy. That would be fucking sick, man. That's like my dream. That would be my dream. Uh, and then their safeties, they got Kirby Joseph, who we just said. Uh, they got Effiati. Oh, Kirby Joseph is good, right? Yeah. Tracy Walker. He's the one who picked off uh, Aaron Rodgers twice. Uh, Tracy Walker is also good. Effiati Melifonwu. He's they got that uh, Jackson State linebacker. That's crazy. It kind of pissed me off. They got that Rodriguez guy. Rodrigo. Yeah, he was good. James Houston? Yeah. Yeah, he's good. They also got uh, Alex they need a I they feel bad that need. EB coach now talking about it. He's going to fire me. Look at what you got in this damn room. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to fire me, but look what I got to work with. So, <laughs> bro, they, bro. I actually like their defensive line though. The defensive line is nasty. They got dude. A, long, a young defensive line. Like they got some yeah, recently they, drafted guys. Like, they cut Brockers, right? Name it, name it, name yeah. it, name it. All right. They got some young guys who I like the potential of. Like Josh Pascal. Oh, dude, they have, Neil. They, have, they have Neil and um 
And they have two defensive tackles that I like. That's crazy. I forgot about that. They have Isaiah Bugs from uh, I don't Alabama. Like that. John Kaminsky from uh, Charleston. Charles Harris. Aiden Hutchinson. Benito Jones. Uh, Aline McNeil from North Carolina. McNeil. I love McNeil. I want to McNeil. Levi Unwizariki from Washington. I liked him, too. Yeah, those are the two guys that I like, and they got them both in the same draft. Didn't they get Neil in, like, the first or second? Uh, second, and I think – they might have both been second. They were like second and third. Yeah, yeah. I like, both, I like both of those. Yeah. I didn't like Josh Pascal last year, and they got him. Yeah. Oh yeah, with our trade, with what they got him with our trade, you know, when we gave him the wide receiver they didn't use, and we got Louis Seen, who doesn't play football, I guess. And Bruce. Hey, relax, my guy. And then they still have uh, Julian Aquara and Romeo Aquara. Both Rome- oh, yeah. I don't know how good Julian is. Romeo, I wanted to sign so bad, but didn't he get hurt again? Yeah, I think so. Um, I, he's really skinny. James Houston. Uh, did I say Aiden Hutchinson already? Yeah, you said Aiden Hutchinson. Oh, I forgot. Dude, I forgot Aiden Hudson existed. So they don't I don't think they need a defensive lineman, but that will set them off. And that's the thing, right? You could go get you still could get a quarter at 18, right? Or you can even trade up. But then it's like <clears throat> excuse me, your defense line could be so elite to where the fact that it can alleviate so much pressure on your back end. Right? Bro, like your safeties yeah, are good. Okay. Bro, their back ends are getting torched. They're getting their I mean, back end. Their safeties up. are good, it's just their quarter. So it's like hope to God these guys over the top got me. <laughs> hope that God he got me over the top. <laughs> Bro, I remember when uh, the Bears put some fucking dude I cannot remember. It started with an S, like Skolzy or some shit on uh, on Justin Jefferson, bro. I was like, what is happening right now? Dude, I gotta figure out this guy. Something junior. Something, something with an S junior. This motherfucker was praying for his life. <laughs> I'm, if he's still on the roster, I'm gonna find it. I'm looking at their roster right now. Uh... Greg Stroman Jr., Washington yeah. Legends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bro, uh, I think we drafted him like 2016. Six wow. round, maybe? Bro, I felt bad for this man. They oh, then JJ's wow. rookie year, he torched a cornerback on that team, too, on, on, on the Falcons. Um, and this motherfucker had some dumb <laughs> name, too. Um, Damn. Dave's a purposist. Yeah. Well, hey, Harrison Hand is on this team. Did you know that, Kyle? I did know that. Harrison Hand is a bear? <laughs> yeah, you got hand jobs. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I do um, like their, their young duo of Brisker and Kyler Gordon. Yeah, Brisker's nice. I really like him. Uh, they also have uh, Jalen Johnson, Kyle's boy. Hey, shout out Case Cookies. I like 20 them. for 29, Case, 213 to three Case. cuttings today. Kate, the Vikings legend, Case Cookies. Y'all got a lot of legends. Y'all got uh, Case Cookies. <laughs> Bro, imagine Taylor Haneke leading the – this is my bold prediction. Taylor Haneke is going to lead the Atlanta Falcons to an NFC South d- uh, division title. I don't think the roster is good enough for that. I'm telling you, the division is stake enough for it, though. Is it, though? It is. I'm telling you. It depends on who we draft that one. No, Will, like, I, I think, that's the thing. Like, like, I think y'all gonna make a sizable like growth and be good, but I just think like we were it's gonna be than them this year with Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield and PJ Walker at quarterback. You think we're gonna have a worse quarterback than that next year? No comment. So you saying you think CJ Stroud, Bryce Young, Anthony Richardson are all worse than PJ Walker? Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield? We don't know. I do know. Nobody can be that bad. I don't even think Will Levis would be that bad. We don't know. That's the thing. We don't know until it happens. What are y'all saying? What kind of drugs are y'all smoking over there? Uh, I'm smoking that Taylor Haneke pack. Yes, sir. That guy stinks. That guy stinks. My bold prediction is that he's going to lead the Falcons to a playoff berth. Hey, he's I'm going to let you know. I wouldn't call that lead. It's called fumbling into the playoffs. That's <laughs> is that cookies? Yeah. He got smacked. Oh, Dude, I really think the uniforms are god awful. I think what? that it. Linebacker. 
I mean, the DB that was on um, uh, there is a linebacker I keep seeing bought to us that I'm interested in that I think a lot of people really like and I'm kind of curious about. Uh, Dorian Williams from Tulane, I think. He's from uh, North Carolina. Or South Carolina. So he's a guy I'm interested. He's a local guy, I believe, to the Carolinas. But yeah. uh, A lot of good stuff. Land, South Carolina. Oh, shit. That's like 30 minutes from here. <laughs> I'm trying to move to Indian land, to be honest. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's it, guys. That's all we got. I want to drop this one name. Kendall Sheffield. Uh, that's who I, was, I found it. I went away yeah. for a second. I had to watch the clip. I had to look at the name. Kendall Sheffield on Justin Jefferson was not good for anyone. Anyways. <laughs> so the next time you shall see us will be mocking our NFL draft and we shall see if we will be better more accurate than our 2022 draft uh I think our 2021 draft was damn good and yes sir. was yes, sir. our best so far so we got that's our standard that we have to live up to and I don't know I I'm just gonna keep it a buck like I think this 2023 is just gonna be so wonky and so wonky. I think really wonky. let's just let's do a couple parameters how we how many points should we get for having a correct player drafted in the first round? All right. So correct player in the first round, I would say one point. Correct slot, two points. Correct team. That means that's the team. So yeah, so okay. So if it's the if we go if we say Falcons take blah 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 at six, right? They don't have the sixth pick. That's ten Correct. points, right? That's ten points. But that's what I'm saying. Like, how, how should we do this? Because let's say we say Bryce Young goes to the Texans at two, and come draft right, the Texans trade up to one with the Panthers to take Bryce Young. That's right. one point. That's one point. If you, if the team takes your player, that's one point. I think you should be able to get up to four points. Player to team, player to team, draft right five. slot. Trade, predict the trade for player, and uh, what was the fourth point I had? I think you should get two points if you predict a trade. Like, okay, like we say the um, the Vikings are coming up to three, but we say they he takes Will Levis, but they actually take CJ Stroud. That's two points, man. Because look at that, it's insane. Yeah, like correctly predicting the trade up, I think you should get points for it. So I think maybe a total of five points. So, yeah. correct player in the first round, you get a point for. It. Yeah. If you name a player, he goes in the first round, not the correct slot. Two points, correct player in the correct slot. Three points, correct player, correct slot, correct team. Five points on a trade. If you correctly predict a trade. I say four points slot. for the trade, but then five points if you get the trade with the slot. Yeah. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, obviously, we know as of right now, the highest the prediction is three and possibly two for the highest trade potential. Then I think it's going to be a lot of trades in the middle round. I don't say a lot, but I think it could be yeah, a couple the, of trades in the middle round. The Vikings will not pick at twenty three. Like the Vikings are not picking at twenty three. It's not happening. So yeah, I'm excited for this mock draft. Is our big event of the year so uh let's see how well we will do we will also be uh we will obviously recap the draft talk about our teams how well we d- did with our mock but also what were some picks that surprised us and you know all that chance and breaking it down and then we'll be breaking down a bunch of stuff leading up into the season uh for the nfl and uh a lot of that good stuff so we hope you guys will enjoy uh our content that is coming up. Also, uh, there'll be some fun. There'll be some fun episodes coming up uh, this off season as well. Now, once the draft is over with, then we're going to work to get for you guys. So uh, definitely stay locked in here. I hate to pile on. Uh, make sure you guys are following us here on Twitch, <laughs> YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, all that stuff. 
Uh, we got a lot of awesome draft coverage, a lot of uh, NFL co- coverage uh, coming up for you guys, and, uh, and plus much more, much, much more. Uh, final words, guys. Anything else you want to say before we go? Uh, what is it? Uh, what's the – what's oh, fuck, man. I really need – I really need my thing. Uh, what is it? Uh, go Coats. There we go. <laughs> I think I got you. I got you. I was trying I to really – Go coach. There we go. Will go coach. Jonathan, anything? Your last words? No, I think that's a perfect way to end it. Perfect. Will Levis, you are an Indianapolis Colt. Go coach. I think most likely it's Anthony Richardson at four. Ah. But all right, guys, have a great rest of your day, and uh, we'll catch you later down for the our mock draft. Be there or be square. Have a good night, guys.